Hi everyone, this is Mia McPherson and welcome back to our Facebook Live series here at Oracle's Modern CX. Joining me this afternoon is Chris J. Snook. Hi Chris. Hey everybody. Hey Mia. Hey, you are the chairman of World Tokenomic Forum. I am. And you are also the author of this book right here called Digital Sense and a new book coming up called Rebooting Retail. Yes, I am the co-author because uh, I can't take full credit for, for either one of those books. Travis Wright on Digital Sense and Danny DeMichelle on the new one are co-authors of mine, but I am responsible for that thing, yes. Great, well congratulations to all of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, Chris, welcome back to Modern CX. I know you've been here previously. I, I was here last year, yeah. Awesome. We had some fun last year talking about the experience marketing framework in that book. Yeah. Very cool. Chris, can you tell me what some of the highlights have been for you so far this year? Outside of this cool pullover, which is very nice in the 30, now almost 60 degree Chicago weather, uh, this is a highlight. Um, I think the keynotes have been great so far. Uh, the energy has been good. The food's been good. Um, check the box on that. And then the massage thing over at Mintigo's booth. Yeah. They uh, they pitched me their software and their AI stuff, and I got a manicure and listened to it, and it was a really smart idea. That That's was the brilliant. only booth that I can honestly say I stopped at, so everyone should copy that. Yes, I need to go visit that one after yeah, this. Whether you like their <laughs> software or not, you should go. You will probably like it afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> They actually have a, they, they had a really neat thing, so I'm glad I sat down and, uh, and listened to them out. They, they're doing some cool stuff uh, over the top of CRM. So. Very they're cool. They're putting a brain on your CRM. I Love actually it. I didn't know my CRM needed a brain, but makes sense to it me now. It can't hurt. That's right. <laughs> makes sense. Chris, can you tell us what is the World Tokenomic Forum and why is it important? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what it is first. So it's a membership consortium of several different constituent groups, um, government regulators, policymakers, uh, and these are in no random order. Mm -hmm. um, emerging technologists, so think startups and, and scale-ups. Um, capital formation uh, or capital providers, so capital markets, capital providers, hedge funds, things like that. And then large enterprises, so enterprises um, across multiple verticals, from banking to uh, Renault Nissan, as an example, is one of our um, industry partners at the auto, uh, in the auto market. And, and so what we do is we convene uh, leaders from around the world, um, and we, you know, help them figure out what it's going to take to bridge a centralized kind of uh, market-driven economy that we've all known for the last hundred years into what we now call and what we've all experienced is a token economy. And a lot of people wonder if a token economy is coming. It's actually been here for quite a, uh, a while. When you can take physical things and you can um, create a digital version of them, whether that be streaming music or, or um, you know, taxi rides, mm -hmm. you are tokenizing assets. You're creating a contract of delivery for future service. And, and so as we move into that, there's some fundamental shifts that businesses are facing, not just on the customer experience side, but fundamentally how their cost structures work. And, um, and there's also regulatory things that have to be thought about in ways that have never been thought about before. And we're seeing that now, even with the uh, congressional hearings. So, um, so we help hold the place and space for that productive discourse and debate to happen. And we do an annual summit um, in Grand Cayman, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, actually, May 8th to 10th. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do things throughout the year in collaborative partnership with other event providers. Very interesting. Yeah, it's fun. I meet a lot of smart people that way. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Chris, can you tell us about blockchain? How is blockchain transforming customer experience? Well, so I think, I think customers mm -hmm. are transforming customer experience. I think... Blockchain is a technology, and you know we're going to be talking about this at my 4:30 session, to really demystify a lot of the vernacular from blockchain to tokens to ICOs to currency to to all these things because a lot of these things are used interchangeably and a lot of them are confusing people. Yes. And they're and um and a lot of them are uh, again buzzwording everything out. So what we wrote about in Digital Sense and now what we're picking up with more case studies and things in the in the follow-up book rebooting retail is that fundamentally our business has shifted. And, and I don't have to tell the smarter CX folks this, um, the customer has to be the asset, right? Gene Bliss wrote about this extensively and has been in the space for 20 some odd years preaching that, but it's really true. And so with the experience marketing framework, what we said was here's a common sense approach every organization can use to merge social business strategy, um, marketing technologies and customer experience. Well, marketing technologies now it's not limited to marketing technologies, right? It's right. it's the entire technology stack. And and so when you think about database structures and things like that, if all you're thinking about with blockchain is a storage medium and should I implement it, you're missing the whole point. Mm -hmm. You really have to be thinking about as a leader today, how am I going to fundamentally reinvent my business model? 
because let's take banks for an instance and then I'll go to another question, but to, to build on this, but like banks right now, there's no product you can invent just as one vertical. This applies to every vertical. There's no product you can invent that another bank or credit union couldn't knock off 24 hours later. Okay, strike number one. Most people are not loyal to their bank. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of convenience and a pain of switching, mm -hmm. right? So, so customer experience, it's kind of like this hard thing to deliver inside of a financial institution. Mm -hmm. Your cost structures are going up, right? Because you're, you got more cybersecurity threats than ever before. You're yeah. a massive target. Um, it's more complex than ever to manage your operation. You have to deal with compliance and regulatory. And so all you see is cost going up. And meanwhile, every profit center that was worth anything to you is being stolen by some fintech company that doesn't have those compliance regulations. Mm -hmm. And so your, your profit centers are walking out the door, your costs are going up, your customers pissed, and you go, hey, welcome to my day, right? So what blockchain represents, and, and we've, we've had a, um, one of our portfolio companies in our investment fund has, um, is called Bank Chain Tech. And um, Bank Chain for the last 18 months has been operating. They have 45 banks across um, Middle East and Africa and, uh, and India and they're expanding into London, UK, and now North America, they've had 45 banks operating on, on a consortium model. So think a blockchain consortium where they've essentially said, we're going to put our correspondence database, we're going to put that outside of our organization. Well, if I ask you to put your, your database outside of your organization and you don't really understand the implications of why that would make sense, your first reaction is going to be like, what? Yeah. But, but what, when you start to understand that when you can do that, you reduce 90% of the correspondence time mm -hmm. right you saying you have money that's clean and title and and that it's not you know terrorist money or whatever kyc aml me saying the asset i have has got a full provenance i actually own it it's a clean mm -hmm. title i can transfer it to you 90 percent of the time cost between us transferring an asset for exchange is sucked up in correspondence because mm -hmm. i have to verify that your data is right and you have to verify that mine's data is right mm -hmm. we need a third party to do that well, the minute we join a consortium model, and this example is one model that can work, all of a sudden it's like saying, it's like saying, is there a pen in my bat in my book? Yes. I don't. You don't have to trust me, do you? So when we can have trustless truth and we can put that outside the, mm -hmm. the organization, it does not mean that we put all of our private data and things we don't want seen. Actually, what it means is we get off third-party servers. We can now through side chains and multi-chain architectures. This is where the blockchain piece gets interesting. Mm -hmm deliver things we weren't able to deliver before, right? And we can do that on-prem and we can have air gap computers and we can have digital keys that serve it up to this public permissible blockchain, meaning it's only available to the members in that consortium. And so what's happening now is banks are saying, you know what, I just signed up Mia for an account and I had to do a KYC, AML, any money laundering um, check on you and it cost me $20. Mm -hmm. And then you're signing up over here as a customer and you're going to an exchange or a share builder account or somebody else who has to do that same check. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? It costs them $20. Yeah. So what our banks have figured out is where they used to compete with each other. Now what they've said is, wait a minute, I have to pay 20. You have to pay 20. Mm -hmm. If I do it first, will you buy it from me for 10? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right mm -hmm. now what happens to you on the customer experience side? You, the end user don't care about my minutia. Mm -hmm. You don't care True. about the exchange's minutia. You don't care about the compliance. You just don't want to waste time. Yeah. You don't understand why you can't just sign up for an account on your mobile phone yeah. and have it go live. And you don't want to understand that, mm -hmm. right? So customer experience is being enabled by new business models mm -hmm. and new ways of thinking about my business. And when you look around, blockchain technology is the only technology stack we have that can actually make that happen. Now, it's not the be all end all because again, without blockchain applications, which put business logic around that storage medium, then you're failed. So there's a lot of things that leaders have to rapidly absorb. Mm -hmm. Now, that's been a theme, I think, this week with a lot of the interviewees that I've spoken with. It's about technology in the background. I may or may not know about it as the consumer. I may or may not need to know about it, but it just helps enable my interaction with the brand or with the company. Yeah, to none, make of us, none of us care about technology, right? right? And, and we shouldn't in the sense that, and I think that's one of the takeaways, you know, when I came here last year, it's unbelievable to me how many amazing call them technology solutions Oracle has, mm -hmm. right? And I know your competitors have some too, but I mean, you guys have sold more cloud than anybody in the planet mm -hmm. um, the last, whatever, 12 to 18 months. I'm not exactly sure, but you've sold a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And all I think about, again, back to the, to the human, you know, I call myself a humanizer sometimes, back to the human element of this is none of us really care, right? We care about like, what am I supposed to do with it? Yeah. How do I, because when we're at point of sale or when we're trying to train our staff at a, at a location, like 
it's already hard. Yeah. What we don't want to have to do is learn and implement a bunch of new stuff. We don't want to have to, none of us actually ever use all of the technology we buy, mm -hmm. right? Because it's just physically impossible. Sure. But if we can get better at understanding why we've bought what we've bought, mm -hmm. how it syncs up with the other things that we've bought, mm -hmm. right? Which is what conferences like this are really great for doing. Um, but, you know, the experience marketing framework kind of helps distill that and simplify that. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing with the World Tokenomic Forum is, is helping leaders learn from each other. Right. And so, mm -hmm. so part of our effort just ongoingly is to find and develop the gaps in their, in their um, solution set, find the early stage and emerging technologies that are filling those gaps, pair them up with large enterprise, mm -hmm. work with regulators and policymakers to make sure they don't stifle that innovation when they're trying to prevent fraud or things that they need to prevent, but make sure that they don't do too much. Right. So this is the conversation that we hold there. But the end game of it is to provide proof points of how we can move more efficiently and more I guess with less with less cost um, and loss through these these uh, yeah. changes as they occur because it's complex and it's hard and we have to try and not simplify it but we have mm -hmm. to focus it in. Absolutely. So, so that's that's what our work's about and 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 um, it keeps us busy. Very interesting. So you have a session later on today, Chris. I do. Can you give us just a little preview of what that session we, will be about? Yeah, we worked with Oracle to make sure we put as many buzzwords in the title as possible. <laughs> So it's called Rebooting Retail, <laughs> buzzword number one, blockchain, buzzword number two, AI, buzzword number three, IoT, and the future of commerce or something of that. Oh, and He's CX is in there. We did it. Like, we literally looked up buzzwords, and we went for the world record. So um, that's at 4.30. Uh, but it'll be, pri it'll be highly pragmatic. And, and what we're going to talk about in that session um, specifically is, um, again, we're going to demystify blockchain from – permissible and permissionless, mm -hmm. right? So permissionless would be things like Bitcoin. You don't need permission to, to see it or join it or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, permissioned would be things that are where you have a consortium model or mm -hmm. where there be, you know, they're organizational only and you have to actually have a digital key to, to access them. And, and how these things can interoperate, right? How you can have a mix of permissioned and permissionless blockchains yeah. in your stack and, and what that means. We're going to talk about what tokens are and what they aren't. We're going to talk. We're going to try and just demystify some of that stuff. And then, really, what we're going to end up um, providing people is a roadmap for how they can evaluate where their business model. Again, going back to customer journey and some of the things that is pure CX, yeah. right? Where are the pain points? Are those pain points a business model pain point? Are they a technology pain point? Are they a mix of both? Mm -hmm. Who needs to be on that page? Who needs to be in that conversation in that cross-functional working group? to figure out what the new version of that business model is, how you're going to get there, and then where you're going to budget. Now, one of the nice things that blockchain can provide, if it's done right, and when I say if, it's a big if, because unfortunately, I think there was a stat out, um, I can't remember if it was Gartner or who, who put it out, but about 80% of the spend in blockchain-related technologies will end up being what they call, you know, waste, right? Like it'll, it'll And this is true of all new things, right? Mm -hmm. We always overspend in this stuff. But in Dubai specifically, I was just there two weeks ago, um, the spend is going to double from like 18 uh, million last year um, to 39 million. And it's going to be like 307 million by 2020, just in the government, just wow. on what the government's spending. And 80 some odd percent of that was predicted to be kind of projects that never materialize into commercial mm -hmm. status. And you kind of need to do that. But when it's done right, um, what happens is you get 10,000 to one or 100 to one, you know, monetary savings in your IT maintenance. And when you think about that, when you're losing profit centers and all those things we said before, whether you're a bank or another industry, this happened to everybody. If all of a sudden you can save $99 on a hundred in your mm -hmm. IT maintenance, because you've been, yeah, well, you? well now you have money to invest in CX. Mm -hmm. And the biggest challenge I've seen over the last two years talking with CX leaders is where does the budget come from? Because nobody owns it. And then if somebody owns it in right. the organization, you know, they don't own the budget. Right. And so, part of the biggest challenge is, is we have to invest in this thing that we know is the ultimate differentiator yet where does that come from mm -hmm. well you know it's pretty hard to do when you have all these other things going up in cost so um again not pie in the sky we're going to talk a lot about practical pragmatic steps that people can take to start to try and move that needle in their favor so they can free up budget to create new profit centers and also new investment capital to invest further in their CX initiatives. Great. I think that's going to be a pretty popular session. I hope us. so. Yeah. If not, I'll be talking to the wall, but you know, <laughs> I, I know one will person be. will be in there, the person judging it. So <laughs> I think you'll do okay. <laughs>
no, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm excited. It's always a good crowd here. So. Absolutely. Why, my last question for you, Chris. Sure. What advice would you have for a marketer or a CX practitioner like myself um, to keep up with these new trends and technologies? That's a good question. So my answer might, so might not be, you know, what you'd expect. I think this is my advice to everybody who, whether they're in CX or marketing or whatever, but I, I my advice would be find something that gets you excited. Find yeah. something that stimulates that childlike curiosity, that energy. So if you're working in an organization and you're not really excited, go find a new one that gets you excited. Mm -hmm. If you're in an organization and there's something about that organization that you really like believe, mm -hmm. whether it's the product, the solution, the culture, I don't, it doesn't matter what it is. Use that as like an anchoring point because what I found is that people don't learn unless they have a reason to learn. Sure. And the best reason to learn is your personal reason that gets mm -hmm. you out of bed every morning. So if you can't find that thing that gets you excited about going to work every day, mm -hmm. you're not going to want to learn anything. It, once you find it, you'll read, you'll consume, you'll podcast, you'll attend, you'll take notes. You will learn rapidly mm -hmm. because you'll have, a, you'll have a reason in your head of why it's important. So my number one advice to people of all stages of the executive suite down to, mm -hmm. you know, the middle manager, that first, that first job, like if you're brand new, find out what it is about the company you work with or that you've started mm -hmm. that turns you on and find out about the challenge, figure out what the challenges that you face that get you excited, that you believe you could be part of solving. Once you have that, then, then you'll, then you'll start to consume the knowledge and the, and the people and the relationships you need to make you better at your job. But until you've got that, it's probably a moot point. Yeah. That's great advice. I think passion again is another key theme here. It's a great fuel. It's, it's, yeah. it's not enough, but it's a necessary fuel yeah. to, to put started. in the hours, mm -hmm. um, you know, to consume the things that are going to make mm -hmm. you better. And by the way, it compounds. So every day that you, you know, read 5% more than you did yesterday, when you add that up over the course of the year, that's like a 1500% more, yeah. like you, you consume 1500% more knowledge. Absolutely. So like it, and then the next year, that's your new baseline. So in a matter of a year or two, if an organization could just train, like could help people connect to their passion about mm -hmm. why they're there. And then, so that's a cultural thing, mm -hmm. right? But then once they do that, enable them or encourage them to go out and try and test and learn new things and Absolutely. bring that back, all of a sudden you have, you know, however many people times 1500% more knowledge base, like things start to move a lot quicker than you think. Yeah. It's a win-win situation for everybody. So, well, thank you so much, Chris, Thanks for, for all having your me. insights. This is, this is fun. We got a cool stage here. This is, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Really cool. It's been yeah, great. Thank well, you. thank you so much. Thanks and for thank listening you guys. We will see you next time. Is this where we do the mannequin pose? Yes. <laughs>